Let's start the square root program. The main purpose of this program is to find the square root of a given number n without using the standard library function sqrt of n and also to discuss the for looping constructs. The input of this program is any number n. The output computes the square root of a given number n. Now let us look into the logic of this program along with for looping constructs. Now let us look into the logic of the square root of a given number program. Here for example consider the value for n equals 50 as an input. Now the square root of this number n is equal to 7.071. As we can see that in the computed part we have two parts. One is the decimal part, one is the fractional part separated by a dot. Now let us look into the logic or the syntax of the for loop which is used in determining the square root of a given number. The syntax for for loop is given by for keyword followed by initialization of a variable condition and also the increment or decrement using an operator plus or minus respectively. And we have to make sure that all these three things have been separated by a semicolon. And it includes some of the executable statements within its block. This is the syntax for for loop. After discussing the syntax of for loop and logic of the program, now let us look into the actual program to calculate the square root of the given number without using the built-in function. The very first line here is hash include stdr.h which is the preprocessor directive along with standard input output library header file. Next two lines are the preprocessor directives along with two more header files known as the console input output header file and mathematical header file. Next line after the preprocessor directives are the void main function from which our program execution starts. The very first line inside the void main are the declaration part. Here we can see that there are two declaration statements. The first line is the variable s which is declared in integer data type along with three x, d and n which are declared with double data types. Here n is an input variable and x is the computed square root output variable and s and d being the intermediate variables. Next we have is the clear screen which is used to clear the output screen. Next two statements are the printf and scanf which is used to display the sentence enter the number on the output screen and also scanf accepts the user value which is taken as input for this given number. Next we need to check the condition if n is greater than or equal to 0 making sure that our input variable the input value of the variable n is always positive. The negative of a number does not compute the square root. Here the very first for loop inside the if statement stands for for of s equals 1 s star s less than or equal to n s plus plus. Here we need to observe that this for loop has been terminated with a semicolon and the very next line after the for loop is s minus minus. This complete for loop is used to calculate the decimal part of a root of this uh, n value. This will be clearly explained once when we do the tracing. The next for loop is used to calculate the fractional part of the square root of a given number. As we can see that this for loop has 
a variable d which is initialized to 0 0.001 and it extends up to 0.999. Hence the condition d is less than 1.0 and it increments with the step of 0 0.001. In the next line we can also see that x equals double of s plus d. This is known as typecasting or type conversion which is clearly explained once when we look into the tracing of the program. If x star x is greater than double of n, we need to subtract a value of 0 0.001 from the calculated root that is x. Next we have to have a break followed by the closing of the given loop. Finally, we need to print the results on the output screen. Here we are printing two values, one the square root of the given number calculated by our program and the result is stored in x. Secondly, we are comparing our calculated program to that of the standard library built in function known as square root of n. Hence, else if this does not if this all the condition does not matches there is no square root for a given negative number. This is the part we checked for if L if n is greater than or equal to 0 making sure that the integer value is always on the positive side. Finally, we have get ch and the closing of the program. Now, let us look into the tracing of this program. As I told you the square root of a given number n which is equal to 50 as an example consists of two parts the decimal and fractional we need to compute two times in order to get the decimal part and also the fractional part. Hence we have two for loops. We shall look into the very first for loop which computes the decimal part. In this for loop we have s equals 1, s square less than or equal to 50 and s plus plus. Here this part is known as initialization as seen in the syntax s is initialized to 1, s square that is the condition which follows s square is less than or equal to 50, 50 being an example number n and s plus plus which is either increment or decrement in this case it is increment and I like to say that we have terminated the for loop using a semicolon. This is used in order to compute this entire for loop without executing any statements inside the for loop block. Here let us see the example for the same. When we take the value of s as 1, 1 star 1 that is 1 square is less than or equal to 50, the condition is true. Then s plus plus, s is incremented to value 2, 2 star 2, 2 square the value which is equal to 4 is always less than or equal to 50, the condition is true. Then once again s plus plus, the value of s moves from 2 to 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Let us take the example of 7. When the value of s is equal to 7, 7 star 7, the value is we know that it is 49 which is always less than or equal to 50 and the condition is true. And but still this s plus plus will be executed. Now the value of s is incremented to 8. We can observe that 8 star 8 that is 8 square the value is 64 which is less than or equal to 50 condition fails. Hence we need to terminate at this position so we are using a semicolon to terminate this for loop. Since the s value is equal to 8 which is not the desired value of the decimal part for this square root of a given number, we need to decrement the value by 1. Hence, we are using 
s minus minus which substitutes to 8 minus minus and the value is 7. This is how we get the decimal part of this program, decimal part of the root of this program. Now the same way we will move to calculate the fractional part. As we know that the syntax of this for loop is same and this has got a new variable d which is initialized to 0 0.001 and up to 0 0.999. Hence the condition d is less than 1.0. We can observe that the maximum accuracy of our decimal fractional part is for 3 digits accuracy. Hence we are moving from 0 0.001 to 0.999 with an increment of 0 0.001 in each and every step. Inside this for loop we have x equals double of s plus d. This is you known as type conversion or type casting. As we can see that the variables x and d were declared in double. S was declared in integer. We need to convert from one data type to another. Here we are converting the S which is in integer data type and adding with double storing the final result with double. This conversion is called as type casting. Hence the final computed result will be stored in x. As in this case x equals 7 which was integer converted to double and added with d. In this case consider at this d is equal to 0 0.07 we will get the condition satisfied. So 0 0.071 will be the value of d which is added to 7 thus computes the square root of a given number as x equals 7.071. And also this last condition which is used for suppose the calculated value upon squaring should never exceed the real value 50. If it exceeds we are subtracting a value of 0 0.001 from the final answer. Hence this condition is used. So this is the tracing of this program. The program is ready for compilation and execution. The very first step we need to compile is using Alt F9. If any errors were there it would have been displaying as errors and warnings. Since there are no more errors we shall execute the program using the command control F9. It is asking for us to enter the number. See the square root of a given number has two parts. One a perfect square, one more non-perfect square. In this example we will take the number 50 which is non-perfect square. As we can see that there are two lines which has been displayed as output. The very first line is the square root of a given number is 7.071 which is the square root calculated by our program and the second line is using the library function sqrt of n. Now once again we will check for a perfect square number. For example we will take the perfect number as 25 and hence we can see that the square root of a given number both from our program and also from the standard library function sqrt the value is 5. And finally we need to check for a negative number. Suppose consider minus 6. Hence we can see the output as no square root for a negative number. Hence this is the out all possible outputs for the square root of a given number program. This concludes the square root of a given program which computes all possible square roots of a given number.